One of the most popular ways to eat octopus in South Korea is by having it served up fresh and wriggling on your plate. Yep, it's called Sanok G, and it's supposed to taste like a mix of chicken and shrimp. Just be careful not to get those suction cups stuck in your throat. Over in Canada, they've got a dish made from moose noses. It's slow cooked until it's tender and then served up with some delicious gravy. Some folks say it tastes like beef while others find it too gamey, but it's considered a delicacy in some parts of the country. If you're ever up north, give it a try. Uh, it can also be jellied. For those northern areas, it's pretty common to eat this kind of meat, and they say there are even pizza toppings with moose meat. Yikes. If you're heading to Peru, Bolivia, or Ecuador, you might come across kiwi, a type of guinea pig that's commonly eaten in those countries. It might sound weird, but apparently Mr. Cupcake tastes like chicken. Just brace yourself because these little guys are not for the faint of heart. They're social rodents that are similar to guinea pigs and are a bit unconventional as a meal. Norway has its own unique dish called lutefisk. It's made from dried cod that's been soaked in lye and then boiled or baked. It's usually served with potatoes, gravy, and sour cream. But beware, it has a strong fishy flavor that some people find off-putting. Have you ever heard of silkworms being used to make silk? Well, turns out they're also a tasty treat. They're often fried up with a light tempura batter and served with sweet and sour sauce over rice. It's definitely a bizarre dinner option, but hey, why not give it a try when you travel around Japan? Pufferfish is a Japanese delicacy with an evil side. Their highly poisonous flesh contains tetrodotoxin, which is 1,200 more toxic than cyanide. Normally, people can't stay alive if they eat this fish. Yet, Japanese chefs are trained to remove the poisonous parts. In Japan, such a delicacy called fugu will cost you at least $130. It's almost completely banned in the U.S. There are only a few authorized places that sell it. This funky, rotten cheese from Italy is totally banned in the U.S., but it's actually pretty popular in its homeland of Sardinia. If you're feeling brave and hungry, you should totally give it a try. It's made from sheep milk cheese that's left to chill with some special flies for 40 days. And get this, those flies lay eggs in the cheese that hatch into live maggots. These little guys help break down the cheese and give kasu marzu that unique texture and spicy flavor. Sadly, you won't find it in the U.S. due to sanitary reasons. But if you're ever in Italy, Go ahead and give it a taste. Now forget about that soft and creamy and not that mouth-watering kazu marzu cheese. Let me tell you about chirpy, the hardest cheese in the world. This thing is made from milk just like any other cheese, but it's got a special secret. It can stay fresh for up to 20 years. The cows that make this cheese are a crazy cross between cows and yaks, and they munch on all kinds of mountain herbs. So when you taste this cheese, you know you're getting a unique flavor that you won't find anywhere else. Okay, so picture this. You're strolling down the streets of the Philippines and you come across this weird looking food called balut. It's like the local version of a protein shake, except it's a fertilized duck egg that's been boiled and eaten whole. Yep, you heard that right. Whole egg, including the little duckling inside. Don't worry though, it's a cheap source of protein and calcium, so you won't break the bank trying it out. Apparently, the Chinese introduced it to the Philippines way back in the day, and it's been a cultural staple ever since. But as word got out about this bizarre snack, people started questioning the ethics of eating it. Greenland sharks don't really have any pee pee pipes, so all their gross stuff just seeps through their skin and meat. That means their flesh is straight up poisonous. But hold up, in Iceland they still chow down on hakarl. That's shark meat that's been hung up to dry for like four, five months. And let me tell you, what you end up with is some stinky jelly-like fish that smells like straight-up ammonia and feels like soggy bread. Yum, right? If you live in America and you've never heard of haggis, well, that's probably because it's been banned for almost 50 years. This Scottish delicacy is made from all the good parts of a sheep, aka the inner bits, mixed with some oatmeal, onions, and broth. Sounds delicious, right? Oh, and did I mention it's spicy? Yum! But wait, there's more. If you're traveling abroad and happen to stumble upon a supermarket, you might notice a lack of raw milk. That's because it's banned in a bunch of countries, including Scotland. But guess what's not banned in Scotland? You got it, haggis. So, while we can enjoy a nice glass of raw milk, 
We can't even try this infamous Scottish pudding. Thanks a lot, FDA. You know what they say, some things just get better with age. And in Bangkok, Thailand, there's a bistro that's taken this saying to a whole new level. They've been serving the same beef and noodle soup for almost a whopping 50 years. That's right, you heard me correctly. Uh, almost half a century. The broth has been simmering away for so long that it's practically become a living being. And they never throw it away. Nope, they just keep it overnight and use it for the next day's soup. The owner of the bistro wants to set the record straight about a common misconception. Lots of folks think they don't clean the pot, but they do it every night. They take out the soup and leave a little bit simmering overnight. That little bit becomes the base for the next day's soup, which means that at least a part of what you're slurping is 45 years old. The owners have never really had a set recipe about how much of each ingredient to use, so whoever's making the soup has to taste it constantly to figure out what needs to be added. Who needs caviar when you can have urumiet, the ultimate delicacy straight from Greenland, made with love using the finest ptarmigan droppings collected during winter? It's like gorgonzola, but with a little extra spice. Don't knock it until you try it. Hey, any ideas about food pairing? You still want some caviar? All right, you win. Do you fancy escamoles? It's also known as insect caviar. Escamoles is a Mexican dish made from ant larvae and pupae. That's right, little ants, but before you start squirming in your seat, let me tell you that escamoles are actually considered a delicacy in Mexico. Some people even say that escamoles taste like a cross between cottage cheese and pine nuts. But let's be real, if you're going to eat ant larvae, you might as well convince yourself that they're delicious, right? In Mexico, they don't waste blackened corn kernels either. Nope, they turn it into a fancy dish called huitlacoche. It's like the fungus version of a designer handbag. Earthy and woody with a hint of, I'm too cool for regular corn. And hey, who doesn't love a little fungus with their meal? It's like the mold on your favorite cheese, but with a Mexican twist. So go ahead, try some huitlacoche and impress your friends with your exotic taste buds. And here's the bonus fact. This dish may taste regular, but it looks quite weird. You know what they say, sometimes a dish just needs a little extra pizzazz. Take stargazy pie from England, for example. It's like the sardines, potatoes, and eggs are all trying to catch a glimpse of their favorite celebrity in the sky. Or maybe they're just really into astrology and want to study the stars up close and personal. Either way, those little fishies are definitely reaching for the stars, or maybe just pointing their tails at them. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.